Well, hello again. Um, a lot of people have asked me about my mother. They want to know if she was mentally ill because of a lot of the things that I've discussed on the channel. And the answer is yes, actually, she was paranoid schizophrenic diagnosed. Um, what does that mean when you're growing up with that as a child? It means that you have to deal with somebody that is absolutely batshit crazy all the time. Uh, I cannot be nice about this at all where it pertains to people that are mentally ill with schizophrenia. I know there's different levels of it. My mother's was really bad. And that's extremely difficult to deal with. Extremely difficult because she hears things, sees things, imagines things, and manifests them. They are real to her. And if you don't believe it, something's wrong with you. Um, first of all, was her believing that she was a witch. She, she thought she was an actual real witch with like magical powers. And when you're a little kid, when you're a little kid, when you're like six years old, you believe that shit. And it's scary. I, I was terrified of her because anytime anything weird happened, like if there was a fire in the neighborhood or something like that, I did that with my mind. And like I said, when you're five, six years old, you believe that. And that is scary. It scares the crap out of you. But she used to tell me stuff like that and she believed it. I think she really believed that she was the cause of things like that car wreck. She did it with her mind. Uh, she used to think people would watch her all the time. Like when she would go to the bathroom, she would go to the bathroom in, in the dark. All the lights had to be out. She wouldn't go in the bathroom in the daytime only at night and the lights had to be out and like when she took a shower all the lights had to be out in the house because according to her people were waiting you know in in our apartment complex uh, I told you I, I grew up on a housing project it was all courtyards and alleyways so when you looked out your window you saw more windows and she was convinced that people would like basically be lined up at those windows waiting for her to take a shower or go to the bathroom so they could watch her through the window which was impossible because it was frosted glass had a shade and a curtain <laughs> but don't tell her that had to be showered in total darkness because men were watching they're all up in those windows watching as soon as she went in the bathroom and they could see the shape of her body somehow they would watch her silhouette and I never got that one. I was like, how's that possible? Well, I, I don't know. Apparently no one else does either. Uh, she used to hear people that weren't there. Marta. Marta in particular. That one used to drive me crazy. It's from the living room out was this alleyway. I've discussed the alleyway before um, in the video, Four Story Window. And across this alleyway apparently was this prostitute named Marta. This uh, Hispanic woman, uh, Cuban or Puerto Rican or something, I thought she said. I don't remember exactly. But she used to say all the time she could hear Marta servicing her customers. And they'd be screaming, ooh, Marta, ooh, Marta. And I didn't hear anything. I'm like, who? What do you hear? There was nobody there. I, I don't think there ever was a Marta. I think she imagined the whole damn thing. It was crazy. Um... She used to think, and this is the weirdest one actually, she used to think that her brain broadcasted signals while she was asleep. So basically, while she was unconscious, whatever she was dreaming about, other people could pick it up with their brains because her brain was transmitting it. She was absolutely convinced. There was this old song, um from the early 80s and it goes I hear the secrets that you keep when you're talking in your sleep whenever that would come on the radio she would get really really angry because she was convinced that that band had been in the Boston area and heard her while she was asleep and wrote that song and she felt like they owed her money I'm not kidding those sons of bitches, they owe me because they wrote that song because they heard my brain. <laughs> it, it sounds hilarious, but it's not hilarious when you're a little kid and somebody's beating the shit out of you while they're telling you that. But yeah, she was crazy. Um, 
demon possession. My sister. When my sister was born, because she was unable to make the sign of the cross on her forehead, you know how some people do, because uh, my mother's Catholic, so she would do stuff like that, um, the baby would squirm. My sister would, you know, she'd move around because she's a baby. No, she would move around because the demon that was hiding inside of her could not accept the cuneiform. And by the way, believing that someone is demon-possessed like that, especially a child, is a sure sign of schizophrenia. <laughs> but so she took the uh, she took my sister to a convent, and there is one. It's it's on uh, if it's still there. There's a convent on the grounds of Saint Elizabeth Hospital in Brighton, Massachusetts, which we lived in Alston, which is Brighton and. Alston are both annexes of Boston. They're they're connected. But she went to the convent and she spoke to the priest who was in charge there, who runs the chapel and the convent and works for the hospital. And fortunately, he was able to convince her that a baptism would be enough <laughs> to uh, to satisfy whatever it was my mother was worried about. But uh Fortunately, it worked. He convinced her, and my sister was baptized, and the demon was gone. So <laughs> we didn't have to worry about that anymore. Um, my sister was not exempt from any of this kind of uh, schizophrenic craziness either. After I had left home, I got out of there as quickly as I could at a fairly young age. <laughs> but when my sister was there... Um, as I pointed out, this was a housing development. And you know uh, that they do regular inspections. They come around to these properties and check them out and make sure everything looks okay in the apartment. You haven't destroyed it or turned it into a crack house or a whorehouse or whatever they're paranoid about um, from these management companies. And they did their inspection forcibly because she always resisted it. I don't know how they got in because when I was living with her, they never got in. The inspection people never got in and the exterminators never did too. That's a whole other story. But they got in, they looked around, gave her a clean bill and left, right? And then it was bad shit crazy time. My sister had told me that all the rest of that day, all through the night, into the early morning when the sun's rising back up, they took the entire apartment apart and searched through absolutely everything there because they were not from the management company. They were agents of the FBI, and they had been in the apartment to plant hidden cameras and microphones. <laughs> and they spent... All that time, God, she, she said maybe 20 hours searching through everything, checking the pockets of the clothing, uh, under the drawers, under the carpets. They moved the furniture and checked under the rugs. And I'm like, how did, how did they find time to hide all that stuff? Obvi obviously, they never found anything because they were not from the FBI. But, I mean, that's just an example of the kind of things you have to deal with when you're dealing with somebody who's full-blown paranoid schizophrenic. They are crazy, and it's hard to deal with. It's hard to live with that. It's hard to care for it. And, you know, you ask yourself, um, why didn't I tell anyone or, you know, whatever. Everybody knew. Everybody knew. Everybody knew she was crazy. The The management people at the at the, at the apartment complexes, because we had, we lived in two. Um, my sister, it was three because she had moved again. But they all knew. Uh, the Department of Public Welfare knew. The social workers knew. She was career welfare. She was a mental disability. She got full benefits, uh, cash assistance, food stamps, Medicaid, clothing allowance, all of it. Um, on that mental disability, she had to see psychiatrists regularly. She was medicated. Everybody knew. Nobody gave a shit. <laughs> they just they didn't care. They didn't care what she did or what she did to us as long as she stayed out of their hair. It, it didn't matter. 